Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about extended entity relationship diagrams using a scenario of people working at a factory. Um, what EERs, EERDs, excuse me, do in terms of database design and uh, programming as is it allows the introduction of object-oriented programming into our database design patterns. So in this instance we are going to create a and let me see if I have my ERDs up in here. I don't. Let me grab it. And in this case we are going to have an entity that is a person. So a person can have a first name they can have a last name and let's go ahead and just have a, uh, a date of birth here. In a factory people have multiple different roles and some of these roles for instance let's say our factory we have an assembly worker and these assembly workers have a field of company years of the company that will say company years and we'll have um, let's say accreditations that you have maybe you're a professional welder maybe you're a uh, professional fabricator or you do a lot of professional ceramics works. Let's leave it at that. And we'll spell it spend accreditations correctly here. And I think we'll just leave it at two fields for right now. So a person can be an assembly worker in this case. And we are going to remove these arrows here these endpoints, excuse me. And our endpoints have us noting that let me fix this line. That a person can be an assembly worker from our in our company. To denote that this is inheriting from the person entity, we use a almost like a sideways subset character for our implementations. And you can use, do this in Lucidchart by simply taking a text box and replacing it with a large U. And then we can orient this guy so that he is turning and let me see if I can do it. and you can do this by rotating this guy in the top right corner here and typically we can do we denote this with a diagonal line but in this instance we will use a we will use a structured line. Now our subset here stating that a assembly worker inherits from person the uh, bell end of the U here should be pointed towards assembly worker. Now a person and can be an assembly worker in our factory but we also have another entity in this situation called managers and managers have um, let's just say a specialized field maybe you work in accounting maybe you're really good at HR and they also have the field of I think we'll just leave this with a specialized field of expertise so let's remove these these attributes here and we want to say that a manager
is also a subset of a person. So let's remove our endpoints. And let's copy one of our U's here. And put the bell end here, right here. So a person at our company with people working at a factory can be an assembly worker and can also be a manager. So let's put this in the singular as well. What happens if can it, if a assembly worker and a manager are one and the same? Can an assembly worker be a manager and a manager be an assembly worker? Sure. Maybe your manager is a foreman for one of these specialized um, for these people who are working on an assembly line, or maybe they are a regional manager but still work the line. This is called overlapping generalization. And overlapping generalization between these two child classes is denoted with a circle. And our circle has a big O in the center for overlap. And all we do now is remove these guys right here and make sure that they are, let me grab a hold of them, and make sh sure that they are connected to our circle. I'm going to move this guy up here just for ease of uniformity in seeing. And we denote that we have a relationship between these guys, specifically an overlapping generalization. All right, so we have our hierarchy here with our person, assembly worker, and manager. But let's kind of build upon this hierarchy here. What happens if we don't have an overlap or an overlapping generalization between um, our entities. So let's add a couple more entities here. And for this entity, we are going to have an assembly worker who is a who is full time. And we are going to have a assembly worker who is a contractor. You do this for instance, maybe you have some specialized thing you need to do on your assembly line that is only done for a limited amount of time and you don't need the full-time um, employee versus needing the full-time. So one of the fields that we would have for a full-time employee would be a salary. The other time would be the other another situation would be benefits. And let's go over here. And for a contractor we would have um, a hourly rate. And typically, as a contractor, you do not get benefits. So in order to say that the sub -cla child classes that we are inheriting from assembly worker here are disjoint, meaning that they can only be one or the other. You can have an assembly worker who is full-time or an assembly worker who is a contractor. We denote that with a circle using, you guessed it, a D. And then we draw our lines to the circle. And I'm going to try and figure out how to implement this with diagonal lines. Um, you use it with a typical line here. Well. And we'll just use the same lines that we used last time. So we have the disjoint connector connecting full-time employees and contractors and also connecting assembly workers to its subclasses. We remove the arrow endings of this guy and we can straighten out that line just a bit. Remove the endings from this guy. And just like with the other 
entity shown above, we are going to denote that these guys are child entities of assembly worker. All right, looks good so far. I look forward to see you all in the next video. Thanks.